You mentioned that you had been feeling miserable for a long time. You can't even place when you first started feeling miserable, be it when you were in medical school or residency or, or whatnot. During no, I think I think after, but I think at that point, I wasn't 100% sure if it wasn't because I was just overwhelmed being a single parent and working a lot and having so many bills. And there wasn't really anything I could do about it at the time that I thought. Like, did you have anybody that you were able to talk to or did you share any of these um, no. things with anyone? No, I mean, you know, my coworkers and I, we, you know, grumbled a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember this one, she was used to say, this is abusive, this is abuse, you know, but we said it to each other. Yeah. And, and that was, you know, and that was good, because it was the way to vent. Mm-hmm. Um, but not really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, in, you know, I think we've come a long way mm-hmm. since those days, because we can, we can talk to each other. But, but why do you think that was, um, that there wasn't an outlet for you to be able to, to share? Because, I mean, I think that the whole uh, persona of a physician was there, was, there were expectations, the expectation to be strong always, to always know what you're doing. I feel like there was a certain pervasiveness in medicine yeah. like that, that you were just, yeah, you got this. If you ain't got this, you don't belong in medicine. Get out. Mm-hmm. And, and who's ready to say that when somebody says it to you like that? So, you know, and I would argue that this is ongoing till this day. The, the the feelings that it's hard to share because of you know, a variety of reasons, one of which being like, I'm not sure how people are going to respond to me if I actually show this vulnerability. Exactly. Um, and I agree with you. I mean, in front of the patient, yes. I mean, you can't, you can't be shaking and like, I'm not sure what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, there is a, um, so you have to exude that air of confidence, even if you don't know the answers, right? And you can still say, I don't know the answers and still be confident. Even though I don't know the answer, I can get you the answer. Right. right? I'm not afraid to tell patients, I don't know mm-hmm. something. And I think they appreciate that. Mm-hmm. As long as I don't say, I don't know, you're on your own. Exactly. You know, that, right. It's like, I don't know, but I think that you should see this person or I don't know, we're going to, we're going to try this or we're going to do these tests or we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to look that up and we're going to say, I'm going to see you next week. Well, I mean, I think that the best thing to ever tell a patient, especially since I'm, I'm in the emergency room, right? So take care of patients all the time that are trying to die on me is I'm going to do my best by you, my absolute best. I'm going to give you everything that I have. And that's what I do. Well, I think it's important because for a lot of reasons, but the power of, of belief and intention, I think is, is really a force, a real force. And if the patient believes they're going to be okay, I think you have a better chance of their being okay. Exactly. So exactly. I never want to say, tell somebody to give up. Exactly. I never say that to someone. You know, but that also goes, you know, or can be applied to, to us, right? Mm-hmm that, you know, realizing that you're not the only person going through this, that other people have experienced very similar things, you know, that life and medicine is challenging, um, and that there are tools available to help ensure that you are going to be okay, you know, and who better to be able to help provide you with those tools than people who are actively working in medicine right beside you and who understands yeah for us by us and just for us this is hope for men men